Amen. Praise God. And so Charlie's Angel was a TV show. And so these three young ladies would go in harm's way for this man, Charlie. And so what was interesting was that they had never seen Charlie. And so Charlie was invisible to them, yet they, they were uh, willing to do his bidding. Then they would get a call and receive information about what Charlie wanted them to do. They would go out to represent Charlie's interest, even though it meant difficult times for them. They were Charlie's angels. I remember watching that when I was a kid. Amen. And so the word angel in the Bible means messenger. I'm not, I'm not going to preach about angels. I preach about you guys, us as a church. Amen. The original Greek word is angelo. It means to be a messenger for somebody else. Now, if invisible Charlie could get these three ladies, ladies to go in harm's way for a man they did not ever see, how much more should we do it for Jesus? Men, messengers for Jesus Christ, amen, are willing to go into harm's way to represent somebody they have never seen. Even though we haven't seen him, we should be ready to fulfill his mission. So, but even though we haven't seen Jesus, amen, he has manifested himself to us. Praise God. So we're going to read a story about this woman, amen, Esther, amen, and she goes on, amen, to be an instrument in God's hands for her people. Esther, for 13 through 17 says, Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do you think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews? For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise from the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to this kingdom for a, such a time as this. And Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa, and to hold a fast on behalf, on my behalf, and do not eat nor drink for three days and or nights. Amen. And the young women will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. We're going to jump down to Esther 5, uh, the next chapter, 1 through uh, 3. On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner courts of the king's palace, in front of the king's quarters, while the king was sitting on the royal throne inside the throne room, opposite to the entrance to the palace. And when the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, uh, she won favor in his sight, and he held out uh, to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. And Esther approached and touched the tip of the scepter. And the king said to her, What is that? What is, what is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? I shall, it, sh it shall be given you even to half of my kingdom. King, King Herod did it in lust. Amen. This this man did it because she had favor upon the king. Uh, king Xerxes, I believe, is his name. Let's pray. God, we pray this evening. We ask you to move by your power and your spirit, my God. As we approach you, Lord God, as we come before you, as we come before your throne, Lord God, we ask you to open the windows of heavens upon our behalf, Lord God, as your people seek you, Lord God, as they seek thy face, diligently, Lord God. We ask you that you would move, Lord God, move heaven and earth for us, Lord God, for we need you, Lord God, in this time and age that, that uh, we live in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I want to look for at first just a time as this. And so the people of God are in danger of in, uh, annihilation. There's this evil man, his name is Haman. And so this man is the second in command to the king. And so he does not like 
where Mordecai does not pay him homage. So this man, he hatches a plan um, of deception to kill not just Mordecai, but all the Jews. And so this man, Mordecai, uh, sorry, uh, Haman, finds out that, that uh, Mordecai is a Jew. And so he does not like Jews. And so he hatches this plan uh, to kill all the Jews. And so the true believer cannot obey um, uh, edicts or conform to fashions which break the law of God. We must obey God rather than man and leave the consequences to him. Haman was full of wrath. His uh, device was inspired by a wicked spirit who had been a murderer from the beginning, who, whose enmity to Christ and to his church governs all his children. And that's what you and I are seeing today, amen, with even the closure of our own church, amen. We have these wicked people, you know, that don't want us to keep going on. They actually hate us. They hate the children of the light because they are the children of the dark. Amen. The devil's plan, just like Haman, is to glorify himself over God. He knows that you, amen, are made in God's image and you have authority bestowed upon you when you're in subjection to God. And so he wants to keep humanity, amen, below him. He wants to keep humanity at the bottom, when, we, when you and I are sub, in subjection to God, amen, we, we're able to have authority over him. Deuteronomy 28, 13 through 14 says, And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail, and you shall only go up and not down. If you obey the commands of the Lord your God, which I command you today, being careful to do them, and if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command you today, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. And so this is what God is telling them. Amen. That he, that they're going to be the head and not the tail. Amen. And so how many of us know that the devil always wants us to be the tail? He, he doesn't want us to get ahead. He doesn't want us, amen, to get God's blessing. He doesn't want us to survive. He wants us in the same place that he's going to because he already knows where he's going. And so the struggle has always been who will reign in our lives. In the Garden of Eden, there was an exchange of words over what God had said, over what the serpent was saying at the time. And so Eve, she chose the serpent's word over God's word. And so she opened a door to a world she did not want to be in. Amen. She was walking with God with her husband. Or actually, her husband and her were walking. But then they lost their authority. Amen. And they were no longer walking with God. If we are under God's authority, then we will have a voice in the matters that can bring life to hopeless situations. Amen. And this is what this woman, Esther, did. She brought life to a hopeless situation. God's people were about to die, and Mordecai told Esther, If you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And so this man, he had the confidence that deliverance would come by some means. And he thought that Esther would be most likely those means. Because she was in a place of position. And if she did not use her influence, amen, for the situation at hand. She would be highly blamed by the people. Amen. For not for not taking a position. Amen. Of being able to deliver God's people. And so God put Esther in a position where she could be a voice in a time that was uh, unfavorable. 
She was a person that God had put in that position to bring deliverance for a doomed people. And so God has put you and I in the same position because you and I are subject to God. I want to take a look at uh, making a way. And so Esther was going to uh, go before the king's throne. And no one could go before the king unless he summoned them. And so they knew if they went before his courts and they were not invited that the person was in danger of losing their life. And this is exactly what this woman did. Even though she was the queen, she went before the king. Amen. And so Esther was married to the king. She could have been high and lifted up in her, heart, in her heart. She could have said to herself, I am the queen. I've made it. I've made it all this way. She could have had to, she could have tried to preserve her own life. And that's a natural thing for us to do. Is say, we're going to preserve our own life. But no, she knew, amen, that this was the only way. Um, and nobody would have found out. Because the only other person that knew that she was a Jew was Mordecai. Her, her cousin. Esther might have known some of the people of the, her community. But she did not know everyone. She was in a high position. Think about it. Who could get to her? Or even, you know, if they went before the king and said something about this, who, amen, would believe them? They were Jews. People that were hated by this man, Haman. And so she put her life in danger for a people that she did not know, a majority of people she did not know. Esther chose a place of humility. To preserve others instead of herself. And so if we want our cities and family members to get saved. We're going to have to take it personal as this woman did. And so Esther 5, 15 through 16 says. And then Esther told them to reply to. Go gather the Jews who are present in uh, Susa. And fast for me. Neither eat nor drink. For three days or nights. My maids and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king. Which is against the law. And I, if I perish I perish. Think about this. The position that she was in. And she's willing to say. That if I perish I perish. But I want God's people to be saved. And so Esther knew that she was going to have to touch God if she was going to gain the mercy from the king. I know the breaking of the flesh is hard so we can get a hold of God. But let me say this evening, when we break that barrier, it releases the provision from heaven. And this is always a struggle, amen, is to, um, to try to break the flesh. Because the flesh doesn't want to be broken. And this is something that this woman did, you know, to, to get a hold of God. It's like when God asks us to give something, a large sum of money. And then we trust him. And we release that amount to him. And so he's able to open the windows of heaven. Because when we do that, amen, when we give, when we pray, when we fast, that means that we're not limiting God. Um, our sister gave a testimony the other day that, that God convicted her or at the, at the, um, at the conference amen, to give a certain amount. And it's amazing how God came through. Myself, s same idea, amen. He, he challenged me to give a certain amount. And when, when I got back, amen, God bless me. I wasn't fasting or praying for that. Uh, our sister was, amen. And so she got a position. 
She was, amen, seeking God out, amen, and so God was able to respond to her need. And so we can come boldly before God. Amen. And so you and I have a great privilege to be able to go before God's throne. Because his son Jesus intercedes for us. Amen. We have a direct connection with God this evening. And so no one in this world but Christians have this special access to God. Amen. And so if you are born believe, uh, born again believer, then you are welcome to go before God's mercy seat. To intercede for others and not just for them, but for yourself. Amen. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed uh, through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are tempted, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I have a lot of needs. There's something wrong with my car. I don't know what's wrong with it. It keeps shaking. Um, I YouTubed it and it said it might be out of oil. And I'm like, oh God, if it's out of oil, then... That doesn't sound good, but uh, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that before God tomorrow, and then I'm gonna try to go see what's wrong with it. Praise the Lord! And so God does not only hear us when we go before Him; He actually responds to our needs. And and so Esther, she knew her position before God. She knew, Amen, how to get God's attention. Esther had been raised by her older cousin, Mordecai. And no doubt she had been raised around the people of God. And so there were people that were accustomed to crying out to God. And they were accustomed, amen, to God answering them. Um, if you look at their ancestry, amen, Abraham, Jacob. Isaac, amen, they were people, amen, that, that would get a hold of their God. And so I believe as we cry out to God, in these troubling times, he's going to do something in the spiritual, spiritually in us, that will surpass any physical need. Isn't it amazing when God touches us, when God ministers to us? That our, our physical needs, amen, we're like, God, all we need is a touch from you. God, all we need is your presence in our life. And that surpasses any of our physical needs that we have. And so are we willing to seek God wholeheartedly? That he will strengthen us from within. Amen. Psalms 18, 4 through, uh, 4 through 6 says, and the cords of death encompassed me, and the torrents of destruction assailed me. The cords of uh, Sheol entangled me, and the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon God, and my God, I cried out for help. For his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Amen. And it's Interesting that the psalmist, amen, says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. So I want to take a look, amen, at the distress signal, also known as a distress call. And so this is an internationally recognized means for obtaining help. And so distress signals are communicated by transmitting radio signals displaying a visual, uh, observable item or illumination, or making a sound audible for a distance. 
A distress signal indicates that a person or group of people, a ship, aircraft, or other vehicles is uh, threatened by serious or intimate danger and requires immediate assistance. Amen. And I want to say this evening, that's how prayer and fasting is. It's a distress signal to God saying, God, I want to get close to you. God, I don't know what to do in this situation. But I know that, that, that you are the person that can help me. And so Esther and the whole Jewish community, amen, they threw out this distress signal to God by prayer and fasting. And so they caught God's attention. Amen. They caught, amen, God's attention. And I just want to say that God, he really does want to move on our behalf. He did it for the Jews. Amen. He's willing to do it for you and I. Hallelujah. Can I have every head bow and every eye closed?